Hi everyone and uh, welcome back uh, to this series of uh, electrical B7 power systems engineering uh, PO exam and this time we will go uh, through some of the theoretical questions about synchronous generator okay and this was part of one of the questions uh, that I solved uh, last time about synchronous generator which is question number uh, two so there, there was some numerical question and after that comes this theoretical question. So all this question is about the synchronous generator and we will see uh, how to handle uh, this question. So it says here, explain the difference between the following three quantities and indicate what type of power system study you might use each uh, of these four. So we'll start with the zero sequence reactants. Now, when the generator under steady state studies, we use only this model, which is basically here we have a voltage supply in series with the uh, synchronous reactants. Sometimes we put with that uh, a resistance. Most of the time we ignore it, especially for power system studies. This is for steady state uh, analysis. Now, steady state analysis could be for load flow or when we have symmetrical faults. So the system is balanced and we use only the, what we call the positive sequence. Now, when the system is subjected to unsymmetrical fault, like single line to ground or line to line fault or line to line to ground fault, the system becomes unbalanced. And to analyze the system, we have to decompose the circuit into three different circuits, zero sequence, positive sequence, and negative sequence. And the model for the zero sequence, you will not have a voltage supply, you will have the zero sequence impedance of the generator. This is what is meant by the zero sequence reactants. This is the one that is, will be used to model your uh, generator. And this 3ZN, this is basically for the reactance or the impedance in the neutral you multiply by 3. But that's not what the question was asking. The question was asking about the zero sequence reactance. This is basically in the modeling of the generator under symmetrical fault, and it's used under, under symmetrical fault studies. The second question, what is the quadrature axis reactants? Now, there are two different types of rotors in the synchronous generator. One of them is called the round rotor. In the round rotor, this is basically the rotor. This is the rotor. And this is the stator. And between them, this is the air gap. And you can see that it, the air gap is basically uniform. Okay. And this is the model, again, by ignoring the resistance, you could have the resistance as well here as Ra. So you have a supply in series with the, with the reactants. This is for the round rotor. Now, there is another type of synchron generator. We call them salient poles. Okay? In the salient uh, pole uh, structure, you have basically two different gaps here. We have the direct gap or the direct axis here. So there is certain distance and there is, there is the one that is 90 degree with it. And this is why it's called quadrature axis, okay? So basically here you have two different distances. One is small, one is large. So here we decompose the reactants into two reactances, the direct and the quadrature, which is this one. So this is used basically in steady state studies for salient generators. So whenever you, you, your generator is a salient type, this is the model. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, this is the armature current IA. The armature current IA will have two components, the direct component and the quadrature components. Okay. Now, these two reactances are basically in, in series like this. So you have the XD and you have the XQ. But we assume that for the XD, you will have the ID, and for the XQ, we have the IQ. So the voltage drop across the XD is ID, XD, and through the quadrature is IQ, XQ. So now we have these vectors. So when you, when you add V, which is this vector, plus 
your i a the total current times r a you get this vector now here we have the angle uh, of the of the current which is coming from the power factor and then you will have id and iq id and iq so i a is decomposed into these two components so we have id xd which is this plus iq xq which is the other component when you add all these vectors you get your internally generated voltage ef okay so that is the quadrature axis re reactions again it's done whenever you are using a salient generator re to represent one part of the of the reactants here you have two reactants the last question is what is about that what is the sub transient synchronous reactance now when the generator is subjected to a fault it doesn't matter if it's symmetrical or unsymmetrical the fault current start very very high and then start to reduce gradually and to represent this we look here so here we start at very very high value and then the, this is the fault current without even clearing the fault current so we start with what we call the sub transient components and this is stays for a very short period of time around 35 to 40 to 50 uh, milliseconds so few cycles then after that the current drops to what we call the transient component and this stays for around one second and then after that the current basically reach the steady state until it is cleared okay so we have the sub transient so the current is very very large this means that the main the dominant reactance at that condition or at the starting of the fault is the sub transient synchronous reactance this is the dominant one and in this formula you can see that clearly this is shows you how to calculate the fault current at the beginning and and little bit after one second until we have the steady state so at t equal to zero it means that this is equal to one and this is will equal to one okay so have one over xd this will cancel with this and this will cancel with this and we have only the sub transient reactants this is the only reactants that will basically limit the current now as we go to infinity this becomes equal to zero and this is becomes equal to zero we have only one over xd which or one over x synchronous this is the synchronous reactance this is the one that is basically used uh, under steel state to limit the current of course the your protection system has to be working by uh, before that Okay, now where we use this, one of the things that we use under stability studies, these curves shows you some, <coughs> what we call the equal area criteria for stability, I will not talk about that, but here it shows you that <coughs> based how long it will take for the fault to be cleared, this will decide if the system will remain stable or unstable. Okay, so we want to clear the fault as soon as possible when it started before this area start to expand and then you reach a level that system becomes unstable unstable means that the uh, rotor will become accelerating indefinitely okay you will not have any synchronization between the generator and you will go for blackout okay so that is what is the sub transient uh, reactants mean